Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. Thank you so much for checking in. Well, guess what day it is today? It's not a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday. It's Big Knife Day. So I thought I would break out the big guns and introduce them to you. This one is the MHK V.2. Now, if you follow along on the channel, I have done a review on one of these knives a couple of years ago. Time just flies by so fast. They revised it. They sent one over to me to test out and we're gonna showcase it for you today. So what we're gonna do as always, cut away, do a quick specs rundown. We're gonna get up close, let you see this knife up close and personal. It's just beautiful blade. And then we're gonna get out here and do a little bit of hard use out in the woods and then we'll bring it back 360 for some final thoughts. Folks, it don't get any better. I got my Jeep fixed. We're back out in the woods. We're out in the playground and you're with me. The video starts now. First, let's start with the chop test. It's made out of Boulder K110, that's Austrian tool steel. Let's see how well it holds up chopping some of these down, old, dried out pine looms. Well, it takes a good... That was all rotten, but we're petrified. It's hard to find stuff up here. Let me tell you what, if that was green wood, that would be going right through it. This is like petrified wood. And I've done video reviews in the past with wood like this, but it's doing a good job. Here, let's try to put a point on this. Here, get rid of that. There we go side nice clean cut I could see using this where it's intended Southeast Asia cutting bamboo opening up coconuts fruit stuff like that it's gonna do just an awesome job One thing I'm noticing well is the uh, handle. The handle, I have a really good purchase on that handle without doing just this crazy G.I. Joe sort of uh, death grip on there. There's enough flare on the pommel and the way it sweeps. It just naturally, here, let's get the pendulum action going. Going. Just naturally, just. Let's uh, try to find a piece of wood that I can maybe carve some stuff with. So we'll cut away and we'll look around. All right, we're gonna try out the HMS on some uh, cedar that I had in my car. I always leave some firewood in the truck just for those you never know. I always like to be prepared. Maybe it's just the Boy Scout in me. But I had to replace the fence in my backyard uh, if you've watched any of my uh, archery videos, uh, you see my fence all the time. It's beautiful, and uh, I saved some of this cedar. I think it's western cedar. So let's get to cutting with it, this HMS V.2 knife. Now, their culture, the Hmong culture in Southeast Asia, these folks are just awesome. Awesome culture, people, and 
they really have a unique set of skills out there in the jungles of Southeast Asia, making houses, making traps, making implements for household chores and for just kitchen chores, and mostly hunting and gathering. So this knife is really like a multi-tool. There's a reason for everything on this blade. Just the long, skinny, piercing point on there for um, making tools and implements and piercing uh, coconuts and bamboo. And you can do a lot with that. And then you have that nice big belly on there, which for chopping, as you know, on any big knife, the belly of the blade is where it's at. And then up close, I mean, you can really get in and do the fine motor skill stuff. Here, let me do some push cuts with it. Just beautiful. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and make feather sticks and stuff like that. You guys have seen me do hundreds of feather sticks. But I wanted to do a little bit of cutting just to show you the performance of this knife and the handle. Uh, when I reviewed version one, I think the handles were a lot thinner. This handle, it's made out of G10, and it's profiled really nice to where there is no hot spots. When I'm flailing around with this knife, and I don't wear gloves in my videos, I'm not one of the guys that likes to wear gloves. Um, I just don't. I like to be able to, to feel the tool and, and be able to use it and work it a little bit more effectively for me. But check that out, I'm gonna bring it up close. Just the chamfer around the edges. And then how it's rolled and it's almost got a little bit of a scallop in the front. Just beautiful, beautiful workmanship. And then a nice lanyard hole. And then like I said when I was chopping, the way it kind of flares out at the pommel, it really is secure when I was coming down hard and chopping that this wasn't gonna fly out of my hands. Now, over there in Southeast Asia, there's a lot of moisture, a lot of rain, a lot of the jungles are just wet all the time. So your hands are gonna get wet if you're hunting and you're going after wild hogs or whatever game, they're gonna get bloody and messy. I can see where you're not gonna lose your grip on this knife. So, let's take it over to another tree. Maybe we can find some more wood to chop on, and then we'll come back for some final thoughts on this knife. Hey folks, how y'all doing? Uh, just here to kind of help out John on some of the testing of, of this blade. Uh, now, one thing, kind of a sidebar, the way I like to use my lanyards, I did a video on all this, but just wanted to show this off again. Large uh, loop here, it enables me to get my arm in there so I can choke up, and I like this point. At first when I saw this, I'm like, nah, that thing's going to break, but there are some benefits to it for small tasks. Now, from what John was saying regarding this blade, uh, this kind of is a, 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 a multi-tool for, for the people that use this, and when you need to get in there and do some some fine work. I'm choking up on it, but this lanyard's also helping by taking all that excess weight off of me. So I'm, I'm able to get in here and let me tell you where I pressure move the wood, not the blade. Safety first, right? Mm -hmm. But you guys get the idea. If I was on a cutting board, you know, chopping up some vegetables or whatever, you know, or, or if I'm skinning an animal, I mean, here I get my finger up on there and do some hide work, whatever the case may be. So that's a benefit to, to that large lanyard. But the, the real reason why I have this lanyard here is I, I throw my thumb. So here's the lanyard. Hand is uh, palm up, throw the thumb up there, 
then I wrap the hand so the lanyard goes behind the hand. And let me tell you, this is now locked in so I can chop away without worrying about this thing flying out of my hand. I'm, I'm very secure. In, in, in my humble opinion, you don't want to like gorilla grip these, these handles. You want to give it a light move. And it's almost just like a, the index finger and the thumb hold it and, and give it guidance. So here I can give the blade guidance as it's uh, getting propelled to do the chop, but it's still secure enough. So we're gonna kind of pan down here to do a little bit of chopping. Please disregard that it's from a, a previous test. We've been out here playing around. So I'm just gonna focus on this uh, smaller chunk here. So I'm trying to be all safety first, get legs out of the way. So I'm just gonna get a feel of, uh, of this thing, focusing on, on this belly area. And again, here I can really scoot back and not worry about the, the, the blade flying out. It does have a nice swell where it opens up. Very, very uh, good way to kind of keep that flare to keep the hand there. But I got my handy dandy lanyard system. So here we go. Just want to see how it bites. I'm not whacking down too hard on this. but And this is probably, this is more, I would say for more of a tropical region. So you're dealing with more fibrous material and smaller material. So think of a jungle environment. You wouldn't be... I mean, this is some hard, hard pine, but it is it is biting down. Like bamboo, banana palms. Yeah, there you go. And you're and you're making tools. You're not chopping a big log. If you, if you live here, like in North America or something, I mean, it, it'll still do some cool stuff for you. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna lie. Let's not limit it to an environment. Actually, what it makes me think of is kind of like a really oddball, almost like a futuristic uh, buoy knife because it's light in the hand. And, and I'm no knife expert, but I mean, if I had to throw it down with this, I would be pretty confident with that point. But let's keep it uh, outdoors related. It's pretty good. I mean, it's taking some chunks off. We've been using some heavier blades and for this one being lighter than some of the other ones that we've been working out here with. It's doing a really good job. I'm, I'm actually impressed. I, I actually didn't expect it, it to bite as well as it's biting. Put it that way. No hot spots. This is, you know, I'm, I'm taking full advantage of that forward momentum with my lanyard system that I got going on here. Yeah, it's biting and good. I mean, it's, and I haven't really felt much shock uh in, uh to my hand i like it so I'm, I'm impressed and then if i want to choke up and do small stuff with it uh, you can if uh you should be out here in the woods with two to three different knives you know you got your your multi-use knife smaller a smaller carving knife and maybe a chop so three blades i typically have like four i got a really small one for for uh personal hygiene you know splinter removal that kind of thing then I got a medium sized blade for kind of carving what I'm doing here. And then if I want, I'll, I'll bring a much larger blade for chopping or I got my hatchet, whatever. But hey, this is a, I kind of like this one. And that point, man, let me tell you, that point, choking back up here, let me tell you, it does some, that is a fine needle point. So if you want to try to, do some small task with this guy again it's it's easy to do especially the way it flares out I'm able to get a good grip on that on the sides get my finger on there and let's say it wasn't woodworking let's say it was just you know whatever you know look at, there, there's a bunch of you could skin could, with that pretty good oh yeah I mean, there's a big enough belly on there yeah if I had to take a hide put my finger here to protect the tip from puncturing any organs and just slip it in underneath and that's going to open up that hide I got all that weight's being taken off and then uh yeah just go to town see i learned something new today especially with the lanyard i always learn something new and that's the good thing about bringing folks on the channel about the lanyard taking the weight off the handle and sliding it up your forearm yep that's actually pretty cool yeah it works really well now the the only problem i would say with a large lanyard uh unlike what i have here on the mountain lagoon here this one's small i don't have to worry about it getting caught I would have this on a pack, not on my belt, because this may or may not catch on stuff. That's probably the one negative I can think of, of having such a large lanyard. On some of my other knives, I, I got a knot in here to reduce that 
large uh, circle from catching on something, that loop. Uh, put a that. toggle on there. Yeah. There's different ways. I got a cousin of mine that he does a great, uh, some kind of like a, 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 a noose type system where he can enlarge or, sh uh, or shorten the loop. I forgot how he does that. I'm going to have to ask him. Since the quarantine's over, people are hitting the woods like uh, like they're invading. Yeah. And uh, everybody's out here free camping. and Which is great. Yeah. We normally, in the middle of the week, we have this whole place to ourselves. And I'm talking about a very large chunk of land. But yeah, it, it, it does warm my heart to see people getting out into the outdoors. And that's great. But at the same time, you know, I'm, we're like, hey. <laughs> this is our land, man. This is our land. You get off our... No, we ain't going to play that. But... We found us a little spot here where we're parked, but it seems like today we just been the dog and pony show. But anyway, we're gonna stay on point. Now, 10 inch long cutting edge, has a really nice sweep, so it, pretty good chopper right there. Obviously the sweet spot. I like how uh, you put that lanyard on there. That, that's something new that I learned. I, I've never seen that and I've done this for a lot of years so i learned something new today thank you Andre. yeah you're welcome and, and you know it's one of those things that uh it kind of got to get used to it you, you, what i mean is it, it's always like an extra step in, in using a blade meaning you want to pull it out and just get to work here you know it's an added safety measure so but when you use it enough times then you end up realizing the the value of it and as i slid it up onto the forearm and, and then was using it for close-up work Man, that just adds more to to that, as we say. Or I, I believe John mentioned that it's kind of like a multi-tool. So it, yeah. it's very reminiscent uh, to the uh, the people in Nepal with their kukris, where they just have that one kukri, and you got the old lady in the kitchen prepping food, but then they'll go out there and get some wood ready, and one tool can do it all. Uh, I've mentioned that I like to carry multiple blades, as most of us do, for different tasks. Uh, in the kitchen, you got different blades for different tasks. Yeah. But knowing how to use it properly it'll 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 cover a lot of fields g10 scales and i talked about it at length about how they profiled the edges uh for me it felt really good in the hand um your honest opinion on the handle and scales for you how did that feel uh i'm, I'm a huge fan of handles that that if it's not neutral completely neutral whether it's broomstick neutral or just free of any grooves it has a slight neutral feel to it, not a lot of gimmicky. Uh, even though some of the finger groove type handles do work and feel good, I want to be able to rotate this handle in, 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 in different ways. And if I got big, big old finger choils uh, where your index finger would go, then that's going to prohibit when I got to turn that around to do some kind of, uh, whatever, different con 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 configurations of holding the handle. Y'all yeah. know where I'm going with this. That, that's a big thing if, if for those students of Japanese cutlery, sword knife fighting. All their, If you look at all their handles, they're very just straight and neutral. So you can do that. There is a slight curve, but if you notice, if I got to do a, a reverse hold and do some fine work, it's not going to impede that as opposed to if it had any huge uh, finger chols or whatnot. It doesn't have another choil to get up to the blade, but I guess I'm not <laughs> I'm not as skilled because I always end up cutting myself on those edges where you do have the finger choil. So there's a little bit of a space and a little bit of a gap, that. but it's still <laughs> close enough where I can get there. And and here's one reason I have a, a, a habit of using my index finger to feel where the end is. So here I got a nice rounded finger guard that tells me where that is. So if I'm not looking, you know, or for whatever reason, I mean, I should be looking, but I think you guys understand what I'm High stress situation. Yeah, high stress situation. You guys can... Could be lost, could be hurt, could be... Sure. Na you know, fill in the blank. Sure, but I've cut myself in very controlled, low stress environments just because I'm not used to uh, uh, having that exposed. So that's just me. Some people, completely different and whatever floats your boat. I always also feel, let's say we did have that big finger choil in the blade. Man, I, that's just that extra inch, inch and a half of, of blade that I could have closer to the handle. That's how I feel about it. But going back to this handle, it's great. And again, a little bit, of, a little enough flare, kind of like that kukri where it flares out. So when you're chopping, I did have the lanyard, but it still helps to, to trap the handle on it. So I like it. I like this handle a lot. Feels good. Plus the, the protrusion at the pommel 
I think it gave it enough room to where when you had the lanyard on, it's not like really pushing up against the back of your hand. That is correct. So it gave maybe a half inch, three quarter inch between maybe even more, maybe even an inch mm -hmm. between your palm. So it gave you a little bit of room on that uh, as I'm, a control measure. Sorry to interrupt, but because no I'm worries. an avid user of that lanyard system that y'all saw, how, where the lanyard hole plays an important uh, part uh, on some of the other knives that one of the other knives that I tested the 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 lanyard uh, hole was in a different part and it kind of didn't work too well but on this one just everything came together so but that's just because of my needs and, and my choices on how to use it so a lot of folks are going to ask what type of grind this knife has this has a full flat grind and it has a convex cutting edge now I mean, we could open up a can of worms on cutting edges, but I'm a huge fanboy on convex. One, a lot of people say if you have a Scandi grind or, or other type, a chisel grind or whatever, anytime you use your strop to strop that blade, you're putting a micro convex edge on that. So if you are a strop fanboy, and you get crazy and you're, you want to keep that edge just uber high speed sharp all the time, yeah. you're putting a convex edge on that blade. But for this full flat grind, I think it suits it very well in the edge retention. I mean, it's yeah. now th this is a good still point. really Be sharp. Uh, depending on how you're stropping, it, it could affect it negatively. Now also, depending on the thickness of, of, of that apex, it could affect it negatively or negatively or positively in doing the convex aspect because I I do tend to prefer a V grind, but because of of the the stropping that I do, I'm pretty darn sure I end up convexing some of my V grinds to a certain degree. And plus, because I'm freehand sharpening, I'm not a machine. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to deviate a little bit, but uh, I'm going by the results that I have seen off of what what I do and. I have had poor experiences with stropping on certain uh, thicknesses, and but it, again, you know, am, am I holding the spine up too high? Uh, you should, the spine should be lower than what you were sharpening when you when you go to strop. So, depends on the person's experience. It could depend on the design and grind and uh, variables and details that we could get into, and that does open up a big conversation. On, Huge on stropping, yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's like. Uh, try it, see what works best for you. And at the end of the day, that's what it. Like, I I I've seen stuff almost go to blows at times, having beers around a campfire, <laughs> talking about serrations and grinds and things like that. So mm -hmm. we're gonna keep it friendly, kid show. Mm -hmm. Now, this knife, I believe, I want to say this is one of the prototypes. It has pretty aggressive jimping. Now, it's my understanding that on the actual production model that's going to be sold on their website, that this will be gone and it'll be just straight across. And actually, I'm okay with that. I don't think, me personally, that the way that um, this knife guard is and the handle is, that I really need jimping I, up on the top like that. I'm a jimping fan, but again, it, it depends on the jimping. It depends how it's developed i i liked it on here if, if it's gonna have jimping that's kind of short i wish it was a little bit more extended doesn't yeah. probably have to be so aggressive but you know whatever i mean i do kind of like jimping but i'm i'm, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it well it could if be it if your away. hands are really wet or bloody or whatever then and it also depends you on probably what, want that sure but. and on what we are doing if you're still gonna rely on on some whittling and doing fine tasks and you yeah. like having that th that forward thumb for control then why not I and mean, if, if you're put if you're there's again here we go back to schools of thoughts yeah. and and opinions opinions are like bungholes mm -hmm. everyone's got one they all stink but if you go to extend the thumb some people say never do that blah, blah, blah. but if you do it helps to have a little bit of jimping me personally if they're going to keep the jimping extended a little bit further down the spine because of 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 different you know people's the anatomy. motor skills and being able to sure. work with it up close sure sure uh but uh you know take it or leave it i like it but if it's gone no big deal it's not gonna really you know i'm not gonna sleep over it so let's talk about the sheath kydex 
and it has a, a strop loop that goes over so you could wear this. I know Hyman likes to wear his knives on a cross draw and he's made me into a convert on that just for multiple reasons, strong arm, weak arm, if you get hurt, stuff like that. So, you know, there's a lot of different variations of how you could carry this knife. Also comes this one, I'm not sure about the production model, but it has these uh, Maxpedition, almost like Molly style strops. And you could put, gosh, four, a four inch belt. So if you're a pro wrestler and you have a WWE belt, you could fit that in there. I'm just joking. I like humor. But um, yeah, it'll fit any size belt in there. And you could strap that into. Uh, Molly webbing. Could you put a tech lock on there? Yeah, you could put a tech lock because they're drilled out in space correctly. Okay. Um, the only recommendation I would have, and Jaime pointed this out, and when he did, I was like, yeah, he's right. I would probably slide this screw down to the next hole. And the reason being is, and he had this a couple times, the cutting edge hit, steel on steel. I don't like rubbing steel on steel uh, on stuff like that so maybe it's up there for um a little bit of retention and being able to hold that in but i mean it has a here let's get it near the mic it has a really good fit it clicks in there really well and i mean i'm not dropping the blade so it fits really good so with that that's a wrap on this video. So I'll leave links for this knife in the video description below, right down below the title of the video in the video description will be a link on where to get this. If you wanna learn more about this and all that, reach out to them. They're very good at answering questions and customer service. And with that folks, it's a wrap. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. But most of all, share the video, share it with your friends. If you like this content and you have friends that like this content, share it because him and I are gonna be going out doing archery. We're doing some air gun stuff. We got a lot of cool stuff lined up for this summer and we wanna get the word out to all you folks out there. So with that, we thank you from the bottom of our heart for all your support. You guys motivate us in getting us out here, doing what we love and We'll see you on the next video. Take care.